Um, welcome to CS2050. This is a really quick thing on Bayes' theorem. This is the last lecture. Ooh, 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 no. So Bayes' theorem is uh, just a simple formula um, about probability theory. But it, it also has tied with it an entire philosophy of randomness and a way we deal with hypothesi and experimentation. In plain terms, it says the probability of A given B. And this means that A and B are events. A is you know a collection of outcomes. B is a collection of outcomes. If you're guaranteed that the outcomes in B, the event B occurs, what is the probability that A occurs, right? This, it turns out, can be formulated in terms of the reverse. The probability of B given A times the probability of uh, A divided by the probability of B. Um, importantly here is this, the, this really is the probability of A given B, but it can be written as a formula in terms of the probability of B given A, weighted appropriately by the probabilities of A and B in some sense. Um, of course, if the probability of B does not equal 0, right? You don't want to divide by 0. Um, first, let's just prove Bayes' theorem. It's fairly simple. Does anyone remember the formula for the conditional um, probability? Just any two events? A intersect B over of B. Probability of A intersect B divide by probability of B. Now that implies that the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B, right? Simply multiply both sides by this non-zero probability of B. But also, importantly, the probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of B intersect A, right? What's the probability of B intersect A? It's going to be the probability of B given A times probability B, excuse me, probability of A. From the same trick. So these two statements are equal. We can then uh, say that the probability of A given B times the probability of B is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A. From there, we have the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A divide by the probability B. Base theorem proved. It's very simple stuff, right? Almost set theoretic in nature, right? Um, so we proved Bayes' theorem. It follows immediately from formulas of simple manipulation. But why do we care about Bayes' theorem? What is the point of Bayes' theorem? Bayes' theorem is usually written not in terms of A and B, but we can rewrite it in terms of a hypothesis and experimentation. So usually Bayes' theorem can be written like, what is the probability my hypothesis is true given a body of evidence, right? E is evidence. It's a set of experiments that have been performed. You have observed some observations about nature in the natural world, whatever fixed environment you're in. Uh, not even just biology, chemistry, physics, but even like game theory of about social uh, economics. I don't know. Anything. You can quantify how much confidence you have in uh, a hypothesis given a body of evidence. So probability of H given E means given all this evidence, how confident should you be in this hypothesis? That can be rewritten, though, using Bayes' theorem as the probability the hypothesis is correct given the evidence as a function of the probability that the evidence, is, evidence occurred given that the hypothesis was true. And of course, weighted appropriately, right? Uh, check. No. This is usually uh, what base theorem means. You can, the, the probability, this again, is the confidence you should have 
that hypothesis is true. It can be formulated as a function of the probability the evidence occurred given that the hypothesis was true, right? Um, pop quiz, uh, what is the probability of A intersect B plus the probability of A intersect B complement? What should it be equal to? Like, I, don't do a calculation. It, uh, de uh, delegate to your, your informal notion of what probability should mean. What should this equal to? Probability of A. Why? Because B plus B complement is um, just the universal. Like yeah. So like, this is the probability that A occurs and B occurs. This is the probability that A occurs and B doesn't occur. So if B occurs, this is. The, what ha this is that probability. If B doesn't occur, it's this probability. So in some sense, this is independent of A. And you could prove this the same way we do it for set theory. Analogously, we have A intersect B union A intersect B complement. Those two sets must be disjoint because B and B complement are disjoint. And this is simply A, right? Partition. If I were to draw a picture of this, in fact, let's say this is A. Uh, so this would be. Uh, a, um, and this would be B, this would be A intersect B, and then A intersect B complement, this would be A intersect B complement, right? So this whole thing is A, right? So set theory, intuition, you can convert to probability theory, right? Um, the reason I mention this is usually you don't know what the probability of the evidence is. You have some uh, notion of what the probability of the hypothesis occurs, like when you do stats, but usually the probability of the evidence occurred is not written this way. So instead, you break this up via the law of total probability. By the way, what is the probability of uh, A intersect B in terms of conditional probabilities? It's going to be the probability of A given B times um, the probability of B, right? So instead of the denominator here, you usually write the probability of E, the, hypo the evidence given the hypothesis weighted by the probability of the hypothesis occurring, uh, plus uh, the probability of um, the evidence given that the hypothesis did not occur times the probability that the hypothesis did not occur. That's usually uh, the way Bayes' theorem is written. The only reason it's written that way is because you don't have a way to know probability of E, usually. Like, what is the probability the evidence occurred unconditional on the fact that hypothesis did or didn't occur? People don't really know. You only know it in context of the hypothesis, occurring or not occurring, right? So let's do a quick example of Bayes' theorem. Let's say you have a drug test, OK? Maybe it's a good drug test or a bad drug test. Let's say it's an illegal narcotics drug test. And the drug test is uh, if they are a user and test is positive. Let's say this is called a, uh, let's say this is 99% accurate. So if they actually do use the drug, the test will be positive 99% of the time, right? Um, but if they're a non-user, uh, the test is negative. 99% uh, of the time. So basically, it has some error on both sides, right? There's a chance that, given this test, you don't use the drug, but the test comes back positive. That there's a chance that occurs. And there's a chance that you do use the drug, and the test comes back negative, and you slip away. There is a chance both of those things occur. It's very small, though. So the test, we may think, is very accurate. We would agree this is a very accurate test, right? But there is error on both sides. You, can't, you don't have certainty. Sometimes you do have certainty in certain situations, like, uh, or sometimes a randomized algorithm will tell you if the answer is no, it's guaranteed to be no. But if the answer is yes, maybe there's a chance it's wrong. That would, we would call like one-sided error. Um, and let's say the uh, population of drug users of drug users is uh, 0.5%. So only uh, one in every 200 people use the drug. Um, maybe I don't know heroin or something, right? Um, so we, wanna, we want to compute the probability that, let's say you take a random person, a totally random person, you make them drug tests, violate their rights. What is the probability the test should be, if the test is positive, what's the probability they're actually a user? 
right? How effective is it if you go out on the street and grab people and you give them random drug tests? What's the probability they're actually users if the test is positive? So what we're going to say is, using Bayes' theorem, we can estimate this. We have the probability that they're actually a user given that the test is positive. We want to compute this, right? So the test comes back positive. What's the probability they're actually doing drugs, right? If you looked at the numbers, you would think that, oh, that's going to be, like, obviously 99%. But we can use Bayes' theorem to infer this. Um, so we write this as the probability that the test was positive given that they're actually a user times the uh, probability that a random person is a user divided by the probability the test came back positive given that they're a user weighted by the probability they're a user plus the probability the test came back positive given that they're a non-user uh, times the probability uh, weighted by the probability they're a non-user. Right? And let's just kind of work this out. So what's the What's the probability the test comes back, back positive given that they're a user? 0.99. Yeah, 0.99. What's the probability that they are a user? Point, yeah, it's not going to be, it's going to be point zero point zero zero five. okay? Yeah. So then we're going to have here, we're going to have 0 0.99 again. 0 0.005 plus what's the probability the test comes back positive given that they're a non-user? Yeah. 0 0.01, right? Uh, and then what's the probability that um, uh, you grab this random person and that they are a non-user? Yeah. All right. Somebody plug that into a calculator for me. I'm not going to do that. Make sure you put your parentheses, right? I have the answer. I worked it out. I just want to make sure we, my math is correct, though. Yeah, so I got like 0 0.332, approximately. That's 33%. That's only 33%. If you take a random person and the test comes back positive, there's only 33% chance that they actually were a drug user. So this test, on, on the base level, you see it's 99% accurate. But you're not testing someone who you know is a drug user or someone you know is not a drug user. You're testing a random person you sample. You just grab a random person. A total, if you take a totally random person and the drug users are only 0.5% of the population, then um, uh, there's only a, 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 a one, one in three chance they actually did do the drug. Here's the reason bef behind it, is this error rate seems pretty small, but so is the population of drug users. So the probability that you, uh, the number of people who are non-drug users and get the, um, get the uh, and test positive through the error is much larger than the probability that they're a drug user and they test positive, right? Let's say you have 100,000 people, OK? If you have 100,000 people, uh, how many users are there? Users would be half a percent of 100,000. What's half a percent of 100,000? 500. 500. We have 500 users. How many of those users will test positive? The drug is 99% effective. How many of them will test positive? 495. Yeah, 495 will test positive. Five uh, slip away. Five test negative. OK. Um, how many non-users are there? Yes, it's going to be that minus that, right? You 99,500 people do not do drugs, or do not do this specific drug. How many of those are going to test negative? 98,505. 
98,505 test negative. How many will test positive? 995 test positive. So we have how many people test positive of 100,000 people in total? 495 people test positive and actually are users. And um, uh, 995 people test positive but are not users, right? 995 is bigger than 495. So way more people are not users who test positive than there are users who test positive simply because the users are so small, right? This is 1,500, but 495 is approximately a third of that. There's way more people who will have an error read on them than this, right? In fact, we could draw this pictorially. We could lay out the 100,000 people into a rectangle. Um, and like, what's the probability that their users is going to be this sliver of it? Let's say this is like, this is too small, but let's say this is, I mean, too big. Let's say that's 0.5%, okay? So most of these people are non-users. So these are the users. These are the non-users then what probability of users uh, test positive? Almost all of them. So, th so we would say that this is the 495 people who test positive, and this is the five people who test negative. How many non-users test positive? It's going to be something like this. It's going to be 995. And then there's, here, here's going to be our 98,505. Uh, right. We can split everyone up into one of these four blocks user, non-user, positive or negative test. This block ends up being bigger than this block even though I didn't draw it. Let me draw it bigger. Okay, it's not the scale. But you can see this block, because I've drawn it bigger, is bigger than this block. It's not, I would have to draw it to scale, but you know, you get, you get what I'm saying. Well, there's way more people who are non-users who will have error, right? So uh, this is a, a great example of like, if you randomly drug test someone, are they actually gonna be positive or not? Um, but more importantly, is this an application of like Bayesian philosophy? It's, uh, there's several philosophies about what randomness should mean, what randomness is, right? Like, um, let's say you flip a coin. There's two, well, there's two, there's two dominant philosophies. There's Bayesianism, and there's like the frequentist perspective, right? Let's say I flip a coin and I don't show you what the coin is, okay? Um, a Bayesian would say uh, the coin is heads with probability one half, right? But a frequentist would say the coin is either 100% uh, with, with probability one, it's either heads or it's, it's, it's a tails with probability one, right? Uh, the Bayesian says, well, I don't know what it is. I don't have the information on that, and so it's 50-50. Now, when you update, you can perform what's called a Bayesian update, and we'll do it in a second. You reveal more information, you learn more information, that goes into your E here, your evidence. As you do more testing, the Bayesian updates their own probabilities. A Bayesian prior is some knowledge you have previously in the world, right? And you take that and you update and you, give, you put odds on basically everything ever occurring, right? What's the probability the sun will rise tomorrow? Why? Uh, because it's always. It's all, how do you know that? What is your evidence? Uh, yeah, but what is your evidence that the sun will rise tomorrow? All the day previous. Yeah, you have, uh, you have, however many days you've been alive, you've seen the sun rise every day. So you have an unscrutable amount of evidence that the sun will rise tomorrow, simply because it has ro uh, rose every day previously. But what's the probability that the sun will rise tomorrow? I'd say it's like 99.99999. It's not one, definitely. It's less than one. But... It's pretty close to one, right? That's Bayesianism. That's Bayesianism. Now, it's not guaranteed that the sun will rise tomorrow. Um, there's this quote by Bertrand Russell. He's like, uh, you know, if you fall, it's, it's a fallacy to think this because you fall into this pattern of expectation. The chicken every morning gets fed, uh, wakes up every day, has breakfast, only for one day to wake up with its, uh, its neck wrung. You know, there's no, there is no guarantee that you, the sun will rise tomorrow. We just, we're pretty sure. Bayesianly, we're, we're pretty sure. So again, part of, part of Bayesian thinking is that you update, uh, given more evidence, you are allowed to update uh, your odds on something occurring. So let's say you drug test a guy, uh, he's, pos he's positive. You know you only have a third of a chance that he actually is a user. So what are you gonna do is you'll take that test 
as what's called a Bayesian prior. You'll put it into your body of knowledge or evidence. And what you're going to do now is you're going to do a second test. If we run a second test on the guy, well, let's just compute it. So let's suppose we have the exact same, same stats. We have 0.5% of the population to be drug users. The test is 99% positive if they are a drug user and 99% negative if, if they're not a drug user. But let's say now you give someone a drug test twice. And they take the second, second drug test if, they pass the, if, they, if the first test is positive. So I may write this as the probability. We want to know the probability that they're a user given that they pass two drug tests. Okay? By pass, I mean the test is positive. They don't like pass the drug test. They, the test says they do drugs. If two tests uh, say they do drugs, what's the probability they actually are using? We were going to perform what's called a Bayesian update. Um, well, we can may write this through Bayes' theorem is then this is just the probability that they are, uh, two tests come back positive given that they are a user times the probability that they're a user. And again, by what's called the law of total probability, this is the law of total probability, right? Um, this is going to be the probability the test comes back positive given that they're a user, weighted by the probability that they actually are a user, plus the probability the test comes back positive given that they're a non-user, uh, weighted by the probability that they're a non-user, right? Now, two uh, drug tests. Sometimes you're given a word problem like this, you have to infer some stuff about it. What do we think the relationship is between the two drug tests? They're independent events. We may say the two drug tests are independent. Okay. Not only that, what is the probability? Uh, now, we haven't done such a calculation with, um, you know, conditionally so with independent events. But what would you expect the probability of two drug tests, given that they're a user, to be, a, uh, to be as a function of the fact that they're independent? I don't expect you to be able to reduce this. But if you had to infer probabilistically thinking, what should the probability be uh, that they pass that they that two tests come back positive in terms of other things? Squared. Yeah, it's going to be in fact the probability that each of those tests come back positive given they're a user because the tests are independent. So in fact, we will write this as the probability that a single test comes back positive given that they're a user squared times the probability they're a user. Right, Bayesian updates, um, and then here we'll have the same thing. Probably that, that one test comes back positive given that they're a user squared times the probability that they're a user plus uh, the probability uh, the test comes back positive given that they're a non-user squared times the probability they're a non-user. Right. And now we may simply plug and chug. What's the probability that they uh, that the test comes back positive given that they're a user? <coughs> yeah. So it's going to be 0 0.99 squared times what's the probability they're a user? 0 0.005, right? Double check me on this. This is going to be 0 0.99 squared, 0 0.005 plus. Um, What's the probability the test comes back positive and they're a non-user? 0 0.01 squared uh, times the probability that they're a non-user. What's the probability they're a non-user? Yeah. Somebody plug and chug that for me. 0 0.98. 0 0.98. So there's a 98% chance now. OK. So one test, there's only a 1 in 3 chance. But you take that guy, you know he just, he just failed the drug test. The drug test just came back positive. He's no longer from the group of all people, and there's not now a probability one. There's not now like a uniform probability he could be anyone in the group because you have a Bayesian prior that he just failed the drug test. The Bayesian prior he failed the drug test is the test came back positive. Now you don't sample him from all 100,000 people. Now you're going to, because he failed the drug test, you know he's one of these 1,500 people. So there's the odds that he fails a drug test 
twice means he comes not from the 100,000 people, but from the, these 1,500 people, and then from them you try to test him again, and so on, right? So if you drug test a guy twice, the probability he fails both tests and he's a non-user is only 2%. So with high confidence, you, you have to test him twice, essentially, right? This eliminates the error. This is called what's called a Bayesian update. You have some bad probability because the error is so small as a function of other things, and then you just do it again. So now your confidence is pretty high that he is, actually is a user, given that two tests were positive. Bayesian thinking, Bayes theorem. Questions? Awesome.